Most of Muhammad's followers are not learned in the Quran and Hadiths to know that Allah, the pagan Arabian supreme rock god of the Kaaba, had in their traditions three daughters. Will you please explain to our listeners the facts? Most of the so-called believers are rarely, if ever, taught about the origins of the cult of Muhammad for the obvious reasons that these revelations would reflect very badly upon their beliefs. As far as the religious and political leaders of Muhammadan Islam are concerned, in their case, ignorance is bliss. Let us now look at the records that we have available regarding this topic. In pre-Islamic days, called the days of ignorance or at Jahiliya, the religious background of the Arabs was pagan and basically animistic. Through wells, trees, stones, caves, springs, and other natural objects, man thought he could make contact with the deity. At Mecca, Allah was the supreme rock god of the Kaaba and chief of the gods and the special deity of the Quraysh, Muhammad's tribe. He was similar to Jove, the king of Roman gods. Allah had three daughters, Al-Uzza, Venus, most revered of all and pleased with human sacrifices and represented by the symbol of a star. Al-Manat, the goddess of destiny, and Allah, the goddess of vegetable life and represented by the symbol of the crescent moon. They acted as intercessors between humans and their father, Allah. The Aus and Khazraj tribe of Medina were the most prominent worshippers of Manat, even though their principal shrines lay north and east of Mecca. Allah and Al-Uzza, well Manat, were all worshipped by the Quraysh of Mecca, who paid much reverence to Allah and Al-Uzza, most of all to the latter. The Quraysh was the tribe to which Muhammad belonged, and Ibn al-Kalbi states that before Muhammad began to preach his own message, he himself once offered a white sheep to Al-Uzza as a member among her own worshippers. Al-Uzza was the youngest of the three daughters of the pre-Islamic Allah, and the patron goddess of Mecca. She is identified with Venus as the morning star, and her name means the mighty one. She resided in a tree similar to the acacia. Such was the paganism in which Muhammad was reared, and which he later came to believe it was his mission to dispel. Al-Uzza, al and Manat, the three daughters of Allah, had their sanctuaries in the land which later became the cradle of Muhammad and Islam. In a weak moment, the monotheistic Muhammad was tempted to recognize these powerful deities of Mecca and Medina and make a compromise in their favor. But afterwards, he retracted the revelation which he blamed upon Satan and instead said to have received the form now found in Surah Al-Najm, the star 53.19-20. to Later, theologians explain this case according to the principle of Nasikh and Mansukh, abrogating and abrogated verses by means of which Allah revokes and alters the announcements of his will. This results in the cancellation of a verse and the substitution of another for it as in Quran 2.100. Al-Tabari 6.108 When the messenger of Allah saw how his tribe turned their backs on him and was grieved to see them shunning the message he had brought to them from Allah, he longed in his soul that something would come to him from Allah that would reconcile him with his tribe. With his love for his tribe and his eagerness for their welfare, it would have delighted him if some of the difficulties which they made for him could have been smoothed, and he debated with himself and fervently desired such an outcome. Then Allah revealed Surah 53, and when he came to the words, Have you thought Allah and Al-Uzza and Manat, the third, the other? Satan cast on his tongue, because of his inner debates and what he desired to bring to his people, the words, These are the high-flying cranes, verily their intercession is to be hoped for. When the pagan Quraysh heard this, they rejoiced and were happy and delighted at the way in which he had spoken of their gods, and they listened to him, while the Muslims, having complete trust in their prophet, with respect of the message which he brought to them from Allah, did not suspect him of error, illusion, or mistake. When he came to the prostration, having completed the surah, he prostrated himself and the Muslims did likewise. The polytheists of the Quraysh and others who were in the Kaaba likewise prostrated themselves because of the reference to their gods which they heard, so that there was no one in the mosque, believer or unbeliever, who did not prostrate himself. Then they all dispersed from the mosque, 
the Quraysh left delighted at the mention of their gods. This is indubitably an authentic story says it is impossible to imagine any Muhammadan Muslim inventing such a tale of the notorious satanic verses. What precisely are we to understand by exalted cranes? The Muhammadan authorities were as uncertain about the meaning of Gharanaq as we are. But what they did know was that this was the refrain that the pagan Quraysh used to chant as they circumambulated the Kaaba. Allat, Al-Uzza and Manat, the third, the other. Indeed, these are the exalted Gharanaq. Let us hope for their intercession. It is unthinkable that the men of the later tradition who regarded Muhammad in every respect as a perfect example for the faithful would have deliberately invented a story so seriously compromising their prophet. We must therefore assume, as the historical kernel of the tradition, that Surah 53 once embodied a different wording, implying acceptance of the pagan conception of the gods, an implication which Muhammad subsequently felt to be incompatible with belief in the one Allah. The renowned Muhammadan expositor al suyuti in his Asbab al nuzul page 184, states, Muhammad was in Mecca. He read the chapter of the star. When he uttered, Have you seen a lot al-Uzza and the other third manat? Satan instilled in his tongue, These are the exalted idols, daughters of Allah, whose intercession is hoped. The infidel said that Muhammad had mentioned their gods with good words. Then, when he prostrated, they prostrated too. The great Sunni exegete Ibn Kathir, even though he doubted the veracity of this report, nonetheless had to admit that how the shaitan threw some falsehood into the words of the messenger and how Allah abolished that. وَمَنَاتْ الثَّالِثَةَ الْأُخْرَى And Manat, the third, the last. And Satan made him utter the words, تِلْكَ الْغَرَانِقَ الْعُلَاء وَإِنَّ شِفْعَتَهُنَّ لَا تُرْتَجَ These are the exalted idols whose intercession is acceptable to Allah. Bukhari 2.177, narrated by Ibn Abbas. The Prophet prostrated while reciting a najm, and with him prostrated the Muslims, the pagans, the jinns, and all human beings. Dear listeners, the hadith asserts that all of humanity, as well as all demons, were witnesses to this event. Many traditionists have recorded it with reference to the chains of narrators. Among them more commonly known are Al-Tabari, Ibn Abi Hatim, Ibn Al-Munzir, Ibn Mardoya, Ibn Ishaq, Musa Ibn Uqba, and Abu Ma'ashar. It is all the more strange that Ibn Hajar, a recognized authority on traditions, insists on the truth of this report and says, as we have mentioned above, three of his chains of narrators satisfy the conditions requisite for an authentic report. When Muhammad brought a revelation from Allah, cancelling what Satan had cast on the tongue of his prophet, the Quraysh said, Muhammad has repented of what he said concerning the position of your gods with Allah, and has altered it and brought something else. Those two phrases which Satan had cast on the tongue of the Messenger of Allah were in the mouth of every polytheist, and they became even more ill-disposed and more violent in their persecution of those of them who had accepted Islam and followed the Messenger of Allah. Ladies and gentlemen, the satanic versus controversy have taxed the minds of the most learned scholars of Muhammad and Islam over 1400 years. The Arabic records can never be ignored or denied, no matter how much contorted logic and explanations are made by the Muhammadan exegetes in their attempts to exonerate Muhammad's kufr, that is his blasphemy, by associating the daughters of Allah with Allah. The Muhammadan records prove that in a moment of weakness, Muhammad tried to bring his pagan tribe to his belief system by compromising his monotheism, but then recanting and conveniently blaming the totally innocent Satan for his own failure.